Welcome back to the Fuller Fanatic channel. On this episode, since I've yet to see any official video out, I'm happy to say the channel will be the first to share the brand new and latest iteration in the Mongoose series. This is the Moen Tooling Front Flipper, designed by Texas knife maker Jerry Moen. Starting with the handle, its length comes in at 4.5 inches and comprised of high grade titanium. The first detail that jumps out at me, of course, is the carbon fiber inlays. Not only is the feel between material transitions unapparent, the fit has been done so well I can barely see the seam line from the millwork. The decorative convex pivot and collar pair extremely well within this design, and the hardware is T8 across the board. The 3D mill pocket clip again plays into the build flowing along with the lower body line of the handle. And definitely my favorite clip design, the front flipper's clip contains a rolling ceramic insert, simplifying in and out of pocket action to one hand. The clip is also blind mount set into the handle, lending an even sleeker look and feel to the build. The only jumping along the actual frame is on the handle's spine side, then again running along the titanium backspacer that protrudes in the slightest amount beyond the frame spine line and again at the rear of the handle. Separating these two sections, there's a drop off in the backspacer containing a pin which forms a hidden lanyard slot. Hence the name, the tab's placement is new to the previous models. In addition, the tab's jimping is much less aggressive, which I can appreciate. Although the tab's jimping has been toned down a bit, the grip provided by the tab remains. And it might be subjective, but I believe I can fire this model a lot harder and with more ease. And by changing the tab's placement, the fidget factor on the model is sky high. And you can even pull off a good old reach around flip. As if the tab isn't fidgety enough, Mr. Moen added a secondary means of deploy, an opening hole. With the factory detent being set perfectly, using only the thumb, one can easily pull off a cat's paw or a slow roll opening. This being the most anticipated addition to the build for me personally, the biggest question was can it be flicked? And the answer is a definite yes. The opening hole isn't conventional, but the angles provided by the triangle shape leaves more open space than a peel shape, so flicking the blade feels natural. The front flipper sports a three and three quarter inch drop point style blade with more of a utilitarian type geometry. Majority of the edge runs flat about two thirds of the way, then breaks into the belly around the tip, with the blade's spine side running a swedge from just beyond the opening hole out to about a fourth of an inch from the blade's tip. The steel used is RWL34, made by Damasteel in Sweden, and the base product of Damasteel itself. Jerry stated he is fond of the way it grinds and holds an edge, in addition to other reasons, and Jerry uses it in all of his customs. Finished in a satin bell grind accompanied by a hand rubbed satin on the flats. The front flipper's blade is sporting a flat grind that's laser beam sharp. And with the addition of the inlays opposed to the mongoose's tab lock, the flipper is utilizing a frame lock with a steel insert and over travel stop. Being extremely new, lockup is at about 15%, but it's definitely solid and will wear in over time. There is no deviation in the scale's shape, nor any milling relief which isn't needed. Just a smooth, even surface that isn't hard to manipulate for disengagement, which I can still pull off an index lock release. The action itself is superb, and running along a loose ceramic bearing system, my personal favorite, the blade easily shakes shut in a controlled manner. And even with the extremely early detent, you can still pull off a slip joint closing. And the travel is very smooth with no hiccups, often found in the cage bearing systems. The ergos score high on the list as well, and although the handle isn't just a rounded rectangle, it remains neutral. Even with the ceramic style clip, there are no hot spots. And honestly, with my hand size, the clip falls right into the pit of my palm, and I don't even know it's there. The jimping provides the perfect purchase for the thumb, as does the rise above the opening hole. The hole itself is easily accessible, and with the hole's entire edge chamfered all the way around, it's very comfortable. Coming in with an overall length of eight and a quarter inches, the Moen Tooling front flipper is definitely a full size build. And by adding inlays that require extensive milling, the carbon fiber variant of this model tips the scales at only 3.1 ounces. The blade to handle ratio is spot on with about an eighth of an inch, if that, to spare. In conclusion, I would definitely recommend this model to anyone inquiring. With it being re-out produced, the fit, finish, and overall quality is levels above others in this price range. But to that same point, fortunately for Mr. Moen, and unfortunately for everyone else, the Moen Tooling front flipper sold out of all the units in the first run, so this won't be available for some time. But you can visit MoenTooling.com and they can give you the details if you're interested in owning a model from the next run. So after spending some time with the front flipper, I'll come back with a review of how the blade handles my ADC tasks. And with that, I'll be signing off.
from the Fuller Fanatic.